Last year, we saw the first new theory for quantum gravity for decades. Post-quantum gravity from Jonathan Oppenheim, the only theory that made it into my best of 2024 summary. But to tell you the truth, I don't think it's correct. Today I want to tell you about a new paper that makes me think that we can soon say goodbye to it. This new theory could solve a big problem that's almost 100 years old. It's that quantum physics and gravity don't get along with each other very well. Quantum physics is what we call a non-deterministic theory. It has a random element, it has built-in uncertainty and it sets limits to what you can do and know. Gravity Gravity, on the other hand, is a non-quantum theory. It's deterministic. It's unpredictable only if we lack information to make better predictions. But we know that these theories have to cooperate somehow, because we know that quantum particles have a gravitational pull. Nature knows how it works, but we don't. To get it done, we need a theory of quantum gravity. Most approaches to quantum gravity so far have worked by giving quantum properties to gravity. This new theory is different. Called post-quantum gravity by Jonathan Oppenheim, it works by adding randomness to gravity in such a way that it fits to the randomness of quantum physics. This gravitational randomness doesn't come from anything else. Oppenheim just assumes that it's a property of nature, like the randomness of quantum mechanics. Oppenheim and his collaborators also say that this randomness changes the law of gravity at large scales and that this could do away with the need for dark matter. Oppenheim's group has suggested that the idea could be tested by looking for small fluctuations in the masses of objects, but it's been somewhat unclear just exactly what to look for or how to measure it. Quantum gravity is usually extremely difficult to test because gravity is such a weak force compared to the other interactions. But in Oppenheim's approach, one doesn't just change gravity, one also changes quantum physics. And testing that is much easier. And this is why another group now got on the case. In a new paper which just appeared on the archive, they show how one can test whether gravity remains a non-quantum theory. Because that means that the uncertainty of gravity must increase to make it compatible with quantum physics, which is exactly what happens in post-quantum gravity. They say that whenever this is the case, this will cause the gravitational attraction to become fuzzy and that'll measurably increase the quantum uncertainty of small objects. Imagine you have two pendulums, masses hanging on strings, and you set one into motion. The mass of the first pendulum will have a gravitational pull on the second mass, so that'll also begin to swing a tiny little bit. If gravity has this random element, then that'll lead to a bigger spread in the positions of masses than when it doesn't. This is what they suggest to test in the new paper, just with tiny quantum objects. Interestingly, this prediction doesn't depend on the details of the model, because we know what the strength of gravity is. It's still a very small effect though, so they say that to measure it, one needs to keep intrinsic noise from atomic motions in check, so one needs objects that can be cooled to very low temperatures. They say that at the moment the technology isn't quite there yet, but that it might be possible in the near future, maybe on a space mission, which would avoid additional uncertainty from the gravitational field of our own planet. This paper comes from the same group, by the way, which has previously tested Penrose's idea of gravitationally induced collapse and basically rolled it out four years ago. If you watched my previous videos on the topic, you might remember that I said something along the lines that post-quantum gravity would be testable this way. It's not that I can see the future, it's just that there's a mathematical theorem which proves that this has to be the case. If you leave gravity classical, you screw up quantum physics in a way that's testable soon. The lesson here is that 
changing anything about quantum physics is really hard. It's much harder than changing gravity, which is probably why most of the approaches to quantum gravity so far took the latter route. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's not that post-quantum gravity has been ruled out, it's just that Zabina thinks it will be ruled out. It's very possible that I'm wrong and Jonathan is right, but personally I think that much like postmodern art, post-quantum gravity is a little too random. Good science writing is hard to find. If you've also had this experience, I recommend you have a look at Nautilus, which is my favorite science magazine. Nautilus has a digital and a print version and it's just a pleasure to read. They put a lot of effort into accuracy, good writing, graphic design and, last but not least, interesting information. You notice immediately if you open the print version that it's a high quality production. I've written several contributions for Nautilus myself about physics, black holes, quantum gravity and quantum mechanics. But what I particularly like about Nautilus is that they cover all areas of science, from astronomy to economics, history, neuroscience to philosophy and physics. They'll pick the most relevant topics and give you all the context. And Nautilus is not just a magazine. Becoming a member will get you special deals and offers such as product discounts or priority access to events. And today Today I have a special, special offer. If you get an annual membership between March 5th and March 31st, you'll get a free gift, a gorgeous moleskin notebook. Unfortunately, this offer is available in the US only. Life really isn't fair. But if you're among the lucky Americans, head to joinnautilus.com slash Sabina to get yours. It's a simple way to do something for yourself and for this channel. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.